Okay. So this is young Alexandra Younger. She is digging a shovel test pit. What many of you see us refer to as STP. It's cold out here in the forest this morning. So what she's doing is just popping out a circular little hole and she's trying to find the subsoil. Things that suck in this process, roots, frozen ground, and there's our sub. Rocks. That orange is the sub. So she'll tidy up the hole a little bit more <laughs> and make it get it. Get it. Uh, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> so then she brings over here and she sifts through the dirt to find any artifacts. Sometimes it's a little too hard. <laughs> All right. Alex is using the trowel method of screening. Hey, What's that? What's that? Looks like ceramic. Maybe even that type of white, hand. whiteware. Very nice. This is how archaeologists do it, people. And then she comes over here, knowing that there's still more, but oh, she yes. bags it. Meow, meow. There are meow, some meow, casualties meow, meow, meow. in the process, but we do what we can. That's when Alex is digging, not me, <laughs> because I'm very worm conscious. Even though they're everywhere. Doesn't matter. I'm like a Buddha. Alex is like Genghis Khan. <laughs> she comes in and pillages the worm villages. Pillager of the worm villages. Could you go faster? This video is going to be boring. <laughs> Meanwhile, this is a compass, <laughs> and what we're doing is setting it to the 30 degree line. Oh, let me get this right. We set it to the 30 degree line and line the arrows up, and then that little arrow up there, we walk in that general direction to the next one and we pace it at 50 feet. So I'll show you how to pace while she finishes that and then we'll come back. So I'm looking and my pace is 22 steps is 50 feet. So Here's the next one. It's already been dug. Actually, it seems like 22 was here. That's so close. But we'll probably have to redo it anyway. And then you just continue. And you just keep pacing. And like, see, right there's the next one. Then there's another one and another one. And, whoa, that's the toilet. <laughs> and we'll go back over here, and we're by this creepy torture chamber again. <sighs> and so now she's hit sub and see the color changes. Can you point out? Yeah. Sub is typically a very distinct color from the upper layers. Um, sometimes it's really, really light. Uh, rarely do you find something that's darker underneath. So, And given that it's clay, 
I'm pretty positive it's subsoil. Not too much grows through it except some roots here. And you can almost see if the quality is good enough. The change in two different colors here. This is the upper loam. More soil, more organic material. And that trickles down through into here. This is kind of a silty sand. This is the Piedmont. So everything's been kind of over time oxygenated. And that's where you get that coloring here. And uh, it's still kind of sandy because of old ancient river systems and what have you. So we're pretty far from the mountains, but not quite close enough to the beach. So when you know your geography, you kind of get an idea of what you're going to see. And when you get to the clay, like, it's serious. Like, I could make a little human out of this and roast it on fire. Now, it's not too fun to sift through here. Not at all. And like, rarely would you find artifacts in subsoil. That's when we actually have a real site and we look for features where the soil actually changes from, you know, what the standard. Yeah. So, we don't have to be overly diligent to look through this. But, yeah, usually uh, we just break it up. Because we have a pretty keen eye anyway. But now it's paperwork time. So Alex pulls out the paperwork. Profiling. You write down your artifacts if there were any. We got this very expensive book of soil charts, colors, what they mean, that's for the lab to know. Not really our problem. <laughs> but as long as we get it right, it's all good. And my handy dandy $15 measuring tape that comes in tenths. Tenths of feet is really just not common, but we like to use it here. So because we're not get common. a general measurement. It's about one one point one feet. It's okay if that's like a little off. There will be some discrepancies, but that won't affect anything. What be our uh, test unit here? Do you remember? What be ye test unit? It's 12. Alright. Z12. Z. Z. Alright. And we got one. Dose. One feet. And so far we've got a positive. So we do know we have ceramic. Alright. Now let's play with some soil. Ceramic. Alright, my handy dandy chart. My ungodly large trowel. Pick out a little piece there. So she takes a little piece. It's up to you what kind of sample you go with. This one's pretty dark. This has got really rich organic material. And it looks like it might be that very one, the one at the very bottom. Bottom. It could be any of these, but it doesn't really affect the science too much, as long as we get it in the ballpark. Alright, mark my boundaries here. Oh yeah, I probably, because I'm so professional, I skipped over one little detail. I <laughs> Where did your measuring, measuring tape, tape go? Tape got eaten by the earth. There it is. Cheers. Forgot to measure how these layers go. About 0.5, maybe about 0.2. Again, just eyeball it. 0.2. Layer A. What can we describe that as? Well, sorry, I closed the book. <laughs> it's okay. So that's 2.5 Y, 2.5 slash <laughs> 1, uh, which is black. There we go. Pretty rich. All right, describe that as a sandy loam. Sandy loam. We like to use very cool words. Sandy silty loam. We like to pretend we're scientists. All right, here's our second layer. Almost looks the same, but the book will show the difference. That one's a little sandier, grittier, not too much organic material. Horrible for gardening. All right, if you really want to get eyeballs, if you're having trouble seeing, you know, people like to do this a lot, I'd say we're somewhere in here. I like to take the middle one if I'm really not sure. And that's a four and a three. 2.5 by four slash three. The 
described as olive brown. That's upside down. This is a little chart that tells you stuff. <laughs> silky sand. And now onto our sub. Well, we already know it's clay. We get some variations of this. That's like a 6-6. Six, six. Let's see. Sometimes you can find it in 10, but 10 isn't quite red enough, so maybe the 7.5 will match up. Oh, yeah. I get this color a lot, so it's been pretty easy for me. It might look a little bit orange, more orange, but the other one I use is quite much too pink. So I'm not going to go with that. We're going to go with a 5.8 and the 7.5 YR range. Making it a yellowish brown. Though my eyes think it's red. I don't really understand the months all classification, but whoever he is, he's rich. Rich as hell because these are $200 <laughs> for what looks like paint swatches. <laughs> <laughs> and so, not to make this video any longer, I'll just tell you what happens next. So, she's going to finish going through this and see if she finds anything else. <sighs> and. So she puts it over the hole because it'll be easier to screen. Saves a little time. Yeah. And so she'll get through it and then she dumps it all back in and we write on that flag whether it was positive or negative, the date and her initials. And thus concludes your shovel test pit lecture for today, December 1st, 2011. I hope you enjoyed the show. <clears throat> Thanks for coming. <laughs> <laughs>